Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our fall move-in Q&A live stream. My name is Hayden Lau. I am the marketing coordinator for the Department of Housing and Residence Life. We have two guests with us today to help go over our um, move-in questions. So I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves to you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Fallon Thacker, and I am the Associate Director for Residence Life and Education. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Lonell Hodge, and I'm the Assistant Director for RIM Assignments. Perfect. Thank you both for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, so real quick, before we get into move-in, um, we just have a few updates for you all. Um, so now that students have selected their move-in arrival window, we have published the specific appointment times for our residents' COVID-19 tests. These appointment times have been scheduled by last name, and you can find the chart on our website. Once students have completed their COVID-19 test, they uh, may then begin the move-in process. So another update is on our delayed arrival request form. So students who wish to keep their fall assignment without moving in are able to indicate this in the housing portal through the delayed arrival request form. These students are able to either move in at a later date in the fall term or postpone their arrival until the spring. Students are still responsible for the fees outlined in the terms and conditions under this option. And finally, we've been getting a lot of questions about having your beds raised um, in your room. So all beds will be raised to 30 inches. That's at the highest setting, except for Northview and Towers um, and Union West. Um, so these uh, Northview and Towers, those beds are um, they're either full or queen size beds. and They just don't raise up um, like the other beds in the other um, halls. So um, if you're in the academic year agreements, you can expect those beds to be raised. You have that extra added storage underneath. So um, those are all of my updates. I will hand it over to Fallon to start um, our move-in discussion. Okay, well, good afternoon again, everyone. Um, we are so excited to welcome you to campus or back to campus in just a few short days or weeks, depending on when your arrival time is. And so what I'm going to do is go over the before move-in uh, process, during move-in, and then after move-in. So before move-in, you want to make sure that you have chosen your arrival window for when you want to arrive on move-in, on your move-in day. So uh, many people have done this already, but if you have not, um, go ahead and go into the housing portal and make sure that you select that arrival time. Those arrival times are between 9 and 11 a.m., 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., 1 p.m. and 3 p.m., and 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Um, as Hayden mentioned, there, we did have a recent change in our move-in instructions, and so if you had uh, reviewed our website previously and the previous communication, we did make a slight change in uh, the COVID-19 test specifically. So once you select your arrival window, you will then need to review the chart that's on our website to determine your specific arrival time for your COVID test. So your COVID test will be the first part of the move-in process. And in order to make sure that we have an efficient and smooth process, we need to stagger those arrival times within the arrival window. So for example, if you've chosen 9 a.m. as your arrival time, um, you will then need your, your window, I'm sorry, if, you need, if you've chosen 9 to 11 as your arrival window, you'll then need to reference the chart based on the first letter of your last name to determine that specific time. Before you arrive, you will need to submit your information to Adventist Labs so that they can prepare your information for the COVID test. So this is a really important piece to make sure that you move quickly through the drive-through process on move-in day. Um, and this way they will have all of your information prepared, um, including insurance information if you have health insurance. So please review our packing list of what to bring and what not to bring. This is also, all this information is on our website. And so we have a much lengthier list of what to bring and what not to bring on the website, but we're asking that because we will be using a parking garage 
for the drive through process for move-in that you do not arrive or bring oversized vehicles uh, like U-Hauls or oversized trucks that may not fit in a parking garage. Um, review our community living guide and our COVID, and the COVID um, addendum. So our community living guide is our is a resource for residents that encompasses all of the policies and procedures and what to expect when living on campus. Um, we've also addended our RCLG to include what our COVID policies are going to be. And I will talk about some of those in just a, a little bit. And then if you are new to UCF, make sure that you've, su you've submitted your photo to card services to receive your ID upon arrival. So UCF card services is working with us to deliver um, the student IDs for students who are coming to UCF for the first time. So they have contacted, I know students um, following orientation and during orientation throughout the summer. So if you have not done that, go ahead and do that so that you can pick up your ID during check-in so that once you arrive, you will get your COVID test and then you will move to um, check into housing and get your key and ID if applicable. If you're a returning student, um, then you would bring your ID with you or if you need a replacement ID, make sure that you have secured that prior to moving in. And next slide. So on move-in day, we ask that you do not bring any more than two individuals to assist you. Um, we are working to make sure that we have a physically distant move-in process to the best of our ability, and that requires as less um, the least amount of people on campus as possible. We know that students and residents need help with move-in, and so we ask that you limit that to two individuals to assist you, and also to try to limit the number of cars we have coming through the drive through process. Um, all residents and guests are required to wear facial coverings at all times while on campus. So you will need to have a facial covering on while you are in the car um, and in at the garage, including during the COVID test and the housing check-in process in order to protect um, all, all of our staff and students that will be working um, in the garage. And then all of our staff will also be wearing facial coverings um, in order to prioritize the health and well-being of everyone present. So do not arrive early or late for your appointment. Um, this is a very critical piece of the move-in process. Um, we want to ensure a smooth and efficient experience for you and your guests. And we can't do this if everyone arrives at the same time. Um, we have hundreds of people that will be moving in per day and we will um, be prepared to uh, wait if there is a backup or people do not arrive out, do not arrive within their uh, specific appointment. So please do your best to arrive on time. Um, again, it will not work. The process that we have created uh, for the logistics that we've developed will not work if people do not arrive on time. So as I mentioned, you will first receive a COVID test and then you will pull through to check into your room and receive your key and ID if applicable. So not all of our rooms have hard keys. And so you will either get a key to your bedroom and then an ID if applicable. If you already have your student ID, we'll be able to encode your card there in the parking garage so that you can go straight into your room. So this will be a slightly different experience for residents living and moving into Rosen and Union West. So at Rosen and Union West, we are not using the drive-through process that we are using on main campus. Um, for Rosen, there will be a, um, a community check-in process where you will check in at the community office and we'll be able to park in the parking lot and unload in front of Rosen. And then for more details on Union West, we will have a live stream on Monday that will focus on the Union West move-in details. So on move-in day, once you have um, arrived at Garage G, you've received your COVID test and you have picked up your uh, keys to your room, you will then go straight to your community. Um, so you can use the UCF mobile app. So if you have not downloaded that, that's a very um, important resource. And we have maps that can guide you directly to your community. Um, once you receive your COVID test, you will get a wristband um, that indicates that you have received your COVID test so that the staff working in the communities know that you have gotten your COVID test that day. So you can move straight into your room. You don't need to go to the community office or anywhere else. You can go straight into your room unless you're looking to rent a bin. 
So we will have limited bin rentals um, on the move-in days, and those will be available either near or in the community offices, depending on um, depending on the location. And so just look for signage to direct you to those locations. Um, we ask that you do try to bring your own hand truck or dolly or some sort of move, moving equipment if you're going to need it because we do have limited quantities. So if you have any questions or issues on move-in day, we ask that you call the community office before visiting in person. So we're trying to, again, limit the number of people who are standing in line or are inside of our office. Um, most of the issues or concerns that you will have most likely can be resolved via phone. Um, so when, when you check in, you're going to get a key packet that has not only your potentially your ID and your room key in it, but it will also have a business card that will have your community office phone number and then your RA on duty phone number as well. So you will get that information on move-in day and then also those numbers are posted on our website um, for your reference at any time. Next slide. So after move-in, um, this is a really important step that we need all residents to take after move-in. So after move-in and you've received your COVID test, you will need you will need to conduct what we're calling a relative quarantine until you receive your test results. Um, so once you receive your COVID test, the lab will give you a card with instructions on how to check the results of your test. So you will get that once your test is completed on move-in day, and then they're um, anticipating two to four days for those test results. So when you arrive, um, we ask that once you're settled and moved in, is that you do not um, really leave your room until you receive your test results. If you need to go out for food to either pick up um, or receive delivered food, uh, really only for urgent or necess necessities during that time until you receive your test results. Um, so we're, we're looking to try and again, minimize the spread of COVID and make sure that um, our that we're receiving the negative tests before residents start moving about and through campus. Um, residents will be required, um, as I mentioned, to wear facial coverings at all times while on campus and in the residence hall. So this is a, a university policy, um, not just in housing, and that, that any space um, on campus does require a facial covering, including outdoors when physical distancing isn't possible. And so while you're in housing, um, we're asking that whether you're walking through the hallway, whether that hallway be indoor or outdoor, you are required to wear the facial covering at all times. The only time that you should not um, wear your facial covering is when you are inside of your room, um, either by yourself or with your roommates. If a UCF staff member enters your room, um, you will be asked to put on your facial covering while in your room and they will be wearing a facial covering as well. So guests are not permitted at any time. This is uh, an, a, an additional addended uh, part of our community living guide. Um, no guests are allowed at any time under any circumstances. And we want you to reach out to your RA and be on the lookout for communication from them. So uh, to start the semester, we're gonna be doing a lot of virtual communication. Um, and <clears throat> as we continue to monitor the situation, we'll determine whether or not we can have more in-person events and meetings. However, you know, be on the lookout for your RA to reach out to you electronically and virtually, and also um, uh, be prepared to communicate with them like that for to at least start the semester. And then all of our residents are required to attend a mandatory community meeting. So you will have the opportunity to attend a meeting during the week of your move-in. We're going to offer multiple community meetings throughout move-in so that um, if you are unable to attend at a certain time, there will be multiple options for residents to attend. So you will receive an email from your coordinator who is our full-time live-in professional that oversees the community and they will be letting you know what those options are for those community meetings. And at those meetings, we talk about a variety of things, um, including you know, what to expect when living on campus, um, who your RA is, how to engage with your RA, um, how to meet with them, getting to know other residents on your floor, um, different policies and procedures that are important and the different amenities in the community, um, as well as any other important information. And then you will want to work with your roommates to complete a roommate agreement. Um, roommate agreements are always important, but it's a little different in um, the current time because you also want to talk to your roommates about 
you know, how you will ensure your room is um, maintaining cleanliness and how you all will commit to prioritizing your overall health and well-being together. Um, so even if you're not sharing a room, a bedroom with someone else and you're sharing an apartment with others, you want to make sure that you're having these conversations about how you all want to live and share your space as we are, you know, working through COVID-19. And then you'll have the opportunity to still participate in welcome events. Um, the university will continue to do welcome week. Um, I, I believe that schedule is still forthcoming, um, but there will be a variety of opportunities for residents to engage um, in welcome and uh, community events. Next slide, and that's it. Thank you, Fallon. It's a great overview for moving. I know there's a lot of moving parts for it, so thank you for going over that. So now we will move into our questions in the comments. So I know they have been coming in. So thank you to those of you who have been submitting comments. If you have questions, let us know. Um, that is why we are here. Um, we'll start off with Dawn here. She has a question um, about her daughter's move-in time. So it sounds like the time slot she signed up for is three to five, but her COVID test is at 4.30. So what time should we arrive for campus? So great time to just clarify exactly what time they should arrive. Absolutely. So this is a perfect example of you selected your arrival window from three to five and the COVID test is at 4.30. So you should arrive at 4.30. So whatever time the COVID test is, is the time that you should arrive. That is the first step to the move-in process. The arrival time does not mean that you have to be finished with move-in by five o'clock or by the end of your arrival time. The arrival window just provides us an arrival window that then we can then narrow down with the COVID test and you can have as much time as you need to move in on that day. Perfect. Thanks for clearing that up, Fallon. Uh, another question. Um, does Apollo have elevators? Can you guys address that for us? Apollo does not have elevators. Perfect. Thank it's you. a two stories, but only stairs. Got it. Thank you. So let's see. So a question about making multiple trips um, from our hotel to the dorm room to move everything in. Can we proceed directly to the unloading area on the second trip? Absolutely. Thank you. I know we've been getting this question a lot. Um, you know, and we're bound to, to forget something and have to run to the store to grab it. So. All right, so I know we're getting a lot of questions about the, the chart and how to find um, where your last name is going to fit in in that. So um, I believe we have posted the link to that chart in the comments, so you can definitely check that out in there. Question here from Stuart, is a Chevy Suburban going to be fine to bring in for the COVID testing? I know we mentioned not wanting a larger vehicle. Is that gonna be too large of a vehicle? That should be fine. Perfect, thank you. And um, Denise is asking what will be different for Rosen? So I know we have a few Rosen questions and Fallon, you went over it. Do you want to just do another recap for Rosen? Anything um, different that they can notice from there? Yes. Um, so as I mentioned, we won't be using a drive through process at Rosen. It will be a community kind of standard check in when when you arrive. Um, you can park in the parking lot in front of the Rosen community and then you will go into the community office. Um, to check in and receive your key and ID if applicable. Uh, for the COVID test, it will be slightly different at Rosen. So you will be able to receive a COVID test if you move in Monday through Saturday. Um, we will not be doing COVID tests on Sunday at Rosen. So students who move in on Sunday at Rosen will need to get a COVID test on Monday. So on Sunday, they will give you instructions on what to do and when to come back to get your COVID test on Monday. So when, again, when you arrive at Rosen, um, you can go into the community office, they will direct you to get your COVID test, um, and then you can come back and get your room key and um, your ID if it is there. And then again, if you move in on Sunday, you will have to get your test on Monday. So those will be the main differences for move in at Rosen. Thank you. So this is a great question from Elsie. If a student is bringing their own vehicle and their parents are driving a separate vehicle, do they follow the student's vehicle through the drive-through check-in? 
Yes. So what we recommend is that if the student is bringing their own vehicle and um, there are guests in a separate vehicle, is that you, the guests just drive directly to the unloading zone for the community and then meet the student um, in the unloading area once the student is completed the COVID test and checked into their room. This way we can keep as much congestion out of the garage as possible. So the, the best case um, really scenario is to meet at the unloading zone. Um, if there's some reason that that can't happen, there will be a holding area that we will direct um, we will direct you to wait in. And so you won't be able to probably really link back up per se in either scenario. So probably going directly to the community is the best thing to do. That's a good question. That's a good question. Thank you. So question here from Krona. Could the two individuals be a tag team if the other two are waiting somewhere else off campus or is it strictly the same two helpers for move in for the whole time? Yeah, so I think that um, having two people at a time is preferable. So if there are additional guests or additional family members that want to help and, you know, it's going to be a longer day for your family, you can tag team per se. Um, but we just ask that you limit it to two guests at a time as there are going to be other people moving in. And we want to try to maintain the physical distancing as much as possible. Thank you, Fallon. So Rick just wants to clarify, where exactly do they go at their appointment time? Yeah, so that's going to be in parking garage C. Thank you. All right, let's see. So another kind of clarifying question on the windows of time and that COVID time uh, test time that they've been assigned. If you have a 345 COVID test and your move in time is three to five, do we start moving and then go back to get the test? No, you won't have access to your room, your key, your room key um, and your ID and or getting your card encoded if you already have an ID. Um, will be all done in the parking garage where you will first receive your COVID test. So if you try to go to your room before moving, you won't be able to get in because all of your, your stuff will either be in the parking garage or we won't be able to encode your card. Um, so you have to arrive at 345 for the COVID test and then you would check into, check into your room and then you would go to your room and complete your move-in. Thank you. To clarify, that is going to be garage C as in cat, correct? All right, perfect. Yes. All right. So, Stuart is asking, is there a time limit for the unloading area? Um, how is it going to be enforced? Um, can you talk a little bit about that unloading zone and parking, how um, parents and guests should, should handle parking and how the students should handle parking? Yes. So in terms of the unloading, because of um, our extended move in process, we don't anticipate that there's going to be major crowds or congestion in the unloading areas. However, we do have some communities um, where the parking lots and unloading areas are a little bit smaller. And in those areas, there will be staff there to help manage um, those parking lots and those traffic lanes, whether that's our parking services staff or um, the university police. We also work with a um, third party vendor that will also help us with some traffic control as well as unloading. So they will be helping us keep keeping those unloading zones going smoothly. And then in terms of parking there uh, for the move in day, it is OK to remain parked in the unloading area. And then for the student, um, you if you have a car and you're going to be leaving it, you want to make sure that you get your parking permit. Um, as soon as possible. And if for some reason a guest car is going to be uh, left overnight, you will then need to move it to a long-term parking um, option on campus, which you can find on our website and the UCF mobile app. So um, in terms of parking permits for residents, um, you wanna get your parking permit again as soon as possible. Um, however, they will not be ticket, they will not be enforcing that uh, through the move-in period. So you definitely wanna make sure that you have your parking permit in your vehicle by the first day of classes. Thank you, Fallon. 
Um, so a question again from Elsie, is the COVID test being billed to students' health insurance? Yes. So if a student has health insurance, it will first either be billed to the student's health insurance. And then if the health insurance does not cover it, then the university will cover that cost for UCF students. Thank you, Fallon. All right. So question here from Katie. How do we find out our student's mailing address to send Amazon package we might need to send for move-in? Katie, you have to press that. Yeah, so on a section of our website, we have a mail services section, and you can go there and find the mailing address for each community. Perfect. Thank you. I know a lot of us use Amazon, so that's an important question to clear up. So Bill is asking, will the community meetings be in person or virtual? Yeah, that's a good question. As, um, as I shared to start, we're going to be doing most of our group events virtually. So yes, the community meetings will be virtual. Thank you. Um, I have to share this um, from Teresa for um, to remember which garage to go to. It's C as in COVID. So thank you for that, Teresa. <laughs> All right. Um, so Pam is asking, do the Libra dorms have elevators in them? Some of them do. I don't know. Linnell, can you help me out with that one? Yes, they. Um, all of the uh, buildings in Libra have an elevator. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So Karen is asking if we have a late move in time, can we come back the next day with groceries? Uh, I guess this applies to anything else that you would need to come back for the following day. Yes, you can. We just ask that you drop them off to the student and that you do not come into the community. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so Dini is asking, um, what is, what's happening if a student does test positive, um, who to contact, where to go? Um, can one of you just briefly go over um, the plan if a student does test positive? Yeah, so I can give just kind of a high level overview of what we will be doing if a student tests positive. So because the uh, all of the COVID tests that are being administered during move in are in collaboration with Aventus Labs, which will provide the information directly to student health services at UCF. So what will happen is what the student will still be able to access their own results um, to the to their COVID test, but also student health services will be notified. So we will be notified in housing from student health services when a student tests positive. And so if a student tests positive, they will be required to be relocated to an isolation unit through the duration of the necessary um, isolation that needs to occur after that. Um, and then from there, we will work with the student individually to determine what specific needs the student might have in the um, while they're in the isolation period. So this was all included in the COVID addendum that students had to agree to um, to live on campus. And so if you didn't read that entirely, I think it's an important part of that is that students are agreed to um, to potentially have to be relocated to the isolation unit. Um, if the student can't go home. So if you are able to go home after receiving a positive COVID test, then we will move you to an isolation unit. And we will provide all of those instructions. So there, I see the last is like who to contact, where to go, et cetera. So we will provide you, a staff member will reach out to you and provide the student with all of the directions um, and information that they need to know. Perfect. Thank you. Looking for the comment, but I lost it. Um, someone asking about the PO box number. Um, when will that be um, on their portal um, to, so that they can know their exact mailing number? That PO box number. That is a good question, and we will um, have to get that finalized. I'm not sure. I, we're still um, uh, completing room assignments. And so I believe the mail staff likes to wait um, to do those mailbox assignments. But it will be available on the student's portal when it is available. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Fallon or Linnell, do we know about how long um, test results are expected to take to get back? 
The lab has communicated to us that they anticipate two to four days. Got it. Thank you. And um, I know we're doing testing um, for our residents at MoveIn. Um, are we aware of any plans for future COVID tests um, for housing or for campus? Yes, um, at this time, we are only planning to test residents at move-in unless a resident is symptomatic or was instructed to get tested because of possible exposure. Thank you. We're getting a lot of questions about the bedding in the um, isolation spaces. Um, oops, sorry, that's not what I meant to click. So um, do students have to bring their own bedding to those isolation rooms? I would be prepared to take um, to take whatever belongings that you might need during that time, including um, including bedding, yes. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we're also getting a lot of questions about the dining halls and the hours. So we would definitely direct you to dining services um, for all of their hours. Um, so, and if you have any specific questions about those meal plans um, and all of that, we would definitely direct you over to over to them. So, and again, when the dining halls are going to be open, last we heard they will be opening on um, the 21st um, of August. Um, but again, should that change, those updates will come um, from dining services. So Denise is asking, um, will the student pick up their ID card at check-in or do we need to make a separate trip to a different location? Um, if the student has, if the student is a first time to UCF student and just had a UCF orientation this summer and they submitted their photo to card services and all the corresponding information, we should have it at check-in. Um, if the student did not do that, then we, um, you would need to go pick up your ID, uh, after move-in. Got it. Thank you, Fallon. So Michelle is asking, are all beds in Lake Claire 30 inches off of the floor? I know they're being raised to their highest setting um, in Lake Claire. I believe that is 30 inches. Can either of you confirm? Yeah, I don't know the exact specification of yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know the exact inches either from the floor. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. But I believe it's enough to put like a three drawer bin dresser underneath. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Definitely add some extra storage under there. Um, okay. So um, can a student that has an early move in date go back home until closer to the start date? Do you guys have any um, advice on this question? What they should do? Yeah, we've gotten this question quite a bit. And what we're asking is that the students do try to stay on campus um, because the point of us doing the COVID test prior to the student moving in and then asking you to do the relative quarantine, the relative quarantine is so that we can minimize the risk and exposure. And so the more that um, the more that a student goes back either home or out and about to other places definitely increases that risk. And so we are asking that students um, try to stay on campus as much as they can uh, once they move in. And if and that, you know, if a student, um, you know, if you're if you don't want to arrive early, you can choose a later arrival time. Um, you don't have to come early for anything special. Um, and there shouldn't really be any anything different about the experience if you choose to come the first day or to the last two days or the last day. So um, don't don't be afraid to, to choose a later time slot if you'd rather continue to be at home at that time as it's not going to change the movement experience. Thank you. And a question about air purifiers. Are those allowed in the dorms? Are there any restrictions that you guys are aware of? I don't think so, but I would definitely refer to the what to bring, what not to bring list on our website. There's an extensive list of what is um, allowed and what is not allowed. And also our community living guide has that as well. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna look for a few more questions here. Do we know if there is a fee for the student ID card? I cannot remember off the top of my head. 
either of you know? I believe the first card is um, there's no additional Green. fee, but any card after that, um, there is a fee. Okay. Definitely check with card services on that um, to get clarification. Um, so question here from Devin. Um, this is going to be about the guest policy. Um, are we allowed to visit our friends in their dorms if we are also dorming? So we do have an updated guest policy. Um, can you um, go over that um, once more, please? Yeah. So um, we're not allowing guests at all at any time um, for the fall semester. So it, it is a good question about if other students are living on campus, can you visit them in their rooms? Um, what we're asking is that um, you do not go to other buildings that you only have guests from your building. So if you are living in Citrus Hall in Libra, that if you have a guest in your room, that it is only one resident at a time um, for someone else that also lives in Citrus Hall. So um, students do not have um, access to the other buildings. And we're asking that you do not go to the other buildings and that students stay in their rooms and only have one guest at a time in their room from the building that they live in. And no outside guests at all. Thank you. So Tammy is asking, are we allowed to walk around campus with our student after move in? Yeah, I know this is something that, you know, families like to do after, you know, after move in as part of the experience. Um, I, I think that unfortunately what we're really wanting is for students to start that relative quarantine immediately um, and stay in their room as much as possible until they get their COVID test. But once they um, receive their COVID test then they can, and it's negative, then they are free to, to move about campus. Thank you, Fallon. Um, so looks like Rick is wanting some clarification on the info about um, the labs. So I can pull that slide up, Fallon, if you think that'd be helpful, um, that link. So let me just make sure it's the right one. Yeah, so while Hayden is doing that, um, you'll see the link that is up here now. And then we will be emailing this out to students with a room assignment um, in our next uh, move-in email communication. So it is really important that the student goes into this link and completes their information that is requested from the lab, which as I mentioned, will include um, the insurance as well as your personal information and I believe um, driver's license or state ID info. Thank you. All right, so back to our questions. Um, so question here, can someone stay with us to help us move in for about two days? Um, so I know that kind of goes over our guest policy. If you want to um, just kind of touch on again, that overnight guest policy that we have, or really our new guest policy. Yeah, so as I just shared, um, there are no guests allowed, whether that be during, uh, beyond the move-in day, um, or overnight guests. And so if you are going to have someone that's going to stay um, for a couple of days, they should uh, seek to get hotel accommodations or alternate arrangements off campus. So um, residents will not be allowed to have overnight guests on move-in day. Thank you, Fallon. All right. So um, we have a question about um, about the COVID test itself. Um, can you just go over what we do know, if it's a nasal test or um, just a quick overview on what kind of test it actually is? Yes, it is going to be the nasal test. Um, I am not a medical <laughs> expert or professional. So what I can share that our um, associate vice president that oversees student health services has shared with us is that the university is going to use the nasal test as it is the most accurate test um, that's currently out there. Thank you very much. All right, so we're getting some repeat questions. Um, so I'm just gonna scroll through again. I don't know if either of you have anything to share while I look for some newer information or newer comments, Any anything we you think we're missing, any gaps in information you can think of? I don't think so. There's been a lot of really good questions so far. Yeah, and Fallon, you're doing such a great job. 
responding. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I would say that our website has a wealth of information and we are updating it. Um, so if you have questions or something is unclear, the website is going to be a really good resource for you, as well as the COVID UCF specific um, website. Thank you. Yeah, I would definitely echo what Lanell just said about the COVID UCF website. Um, there is so much information on that website about how the university is responding to COVID-19 as a whole. So what to expect in the classroom, around campus, the sanitation, increased sanitation procedures, the, the more detailed COVID policy videos on how to make a face covering, um, all of that. So definitely um, check that out. Perfect, thank you. So we're getting a few more questions coming in here. Um, so Julian is asking, can we stay on campus after winter break? I'm not sure enti like entirely if you mean like during winter break yeah. or, um, or after, like in spring semester. Yeah, so, so this is a really good um, question where it could get a little confusing. So winter break for us is right after um, finals to January. And so it depends really on your agreement type. If you are in an annual agreement, the answer is yes. Um, but if you are in an academic agreement, which means um, Libra, Apollo, those types of um, communities, the answer is no, you would need to return home during the time that, that um, is after your, uh, after December 13th to January 4th. Thanks, Lanelle. We have a question about how to pay for housing and when the due date is. Um, so um, can you talk a little bit about when they should pay and, and how they can pay um, for their housing? Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, uh, the rental um, payment date is on our website for the fall. Um, it typically happens right after financial aid is released. And so you're, if you have financial aid, you'll be responsible, the aid will pay for um, tuition and fees first and whatever remaining will be applied to housing. Um, and if you still have a balance after that, the student will be responsible for paying it. It will be assessed to your um, student account. So all of the billing information will be there. And it, we um, assess rent on a semester basis. Thanks, Lanelle. So Stephanie is asking, will there be extra housekeeping due to COVID? There won't be extra housekeeping inside of your room. Um, so that is something that you and your roommates will be responsible for. Um, but they will be doing increased uh, cleaning through high touch areas on a daily basis. And so some of those areas are going to be doors, elevator buttons, um, elevators themselves, uh, common areas, so community kitchens, if the, if the community has those, so those kinds of areas. Thank you, Fallon. Um, so Carrie is asking if a desk will fit under a raised bed in Hercules. Um, so I don't think so. I don't think you could put your desk under there and sit at it with something on it, but I, I could be wrong. Can either of you clarify that? <laughs> I, I, I don't believe you can in any of the communities. Um, and even if you could, it would probably be strongly discouraged. We think that, uh, um, anything that goes under raised beds, which should be storage and not necessarily um, a, the student's body, <laughs> for a lack of better term. Perfect. Thank you. A question here from Stacy um, about the, um, they get a free face mask, the students do. Do they get that at check-in? Um, do we know anything about the vending machines um, with those and kind of how that's going to work? Um, so if you guys could just go over our face masks. 
Yeah, so um, the answer is yes, you will get, the student will get their face mask um, if they have not picked one up yet um, at check-in. Um, in terms of the venting machine, I don't know if there is going to be a cost associated with that. So that would probably be a great one to look on the COVID-19 website that we were referencing. Um, but they, I know they are gonna be throughout campus. Perfect, thank you. Um, and Terry is asking if the dorms will be sanitized before move-in. Yes, absolutely. Perfect, thank you. Um, so while we're on the topic of cleaning, Marta is asking, are the dorm bathrooms clean? So I do know we have um, a schedule for some of the communities. Are we able to give a, a quick overview of, of how the cleaning services work uh, works in the communities? Yeah, so all of our communities in the academic areas have the weekly cleanings inside of their bathrooms. So that's going to be Nike, Hercules, um, and Neptune, Libra, Apollo, um, and Lake Claire. So the um, the Towers community, Northview and Union West, and Rosen as well. So Rosen also has the, the weekly cleaning, but Towers, Northview, and Union West, there is not a weekly cleaning service. And so those will be cleaned um, in those communities, but we're also asking that students are increasing their own cleaning measures um, if they have the weekly, in, in addition to the weekly cleaning service during this time. Thank you, Fallon. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, question about Florida prepaid from Robin. If you have Florida prepaid for housing, when does that get applied? Yeah, the, that's a really good question. Um, the accounting staff will um, request payment through Florida prepaid, and then they'll transfer the money over. So our accounting staff will initiate the um, payment request. Got it. Thank you, Linnell. And kind of a follow up on that from Elsie: Should um, should students already see their their housing charges on their account, or is that not yet posted? Do we know? Yeah, that's uh, not a hard yes or no. Um, if you have a room assignment, you should see the um, account information within um, 72 hours. If you are still um, at, in a submitted uh, status, you might not see any housing related charges yet. Thank you. So a clarifying question on that desk being stored under a bed. Um, and I think it's, it'll be good to just address um, if you, a student is in one of our converted spaces, um, the mm -hmm. furniture will still be on the other side of the room. Um, Correct. And can you guys just address, can people store that or, or use that other side of the furniture? So the short answer is yes, they will be able to use the furniture in the room in the converted spaces. Um, this, the furniture will not be removed, though, and so storage will be however you set up the, the room for the time being in the converted space. Um, if you have your bed lofted, and you wanted to put, or both of the beds are lofted and you wanted to put the desk underneath there, that's fine for the fall semester, but you may have to rearrange it again in the spring. Thank you for clarifying that. So um, another question about returning um, after the break. So um, classes are going virtual after the Thanksgiving break. Are students allowed to return to their residence halls after Thanksgiving and like through their finals up until that um, winter break period? Yes, uh, housing will remain open. And so if you choose not to go home for Thanksgiving, um, that's totally fine, but our campus will uh, our facilities will still be open um, even after the Thanksgiving remote time period. Perfect, thank you both. So um, that is looking like all the questions that I can see in here. Um, so thank you all okay. so much for submitting so many great questions. I know, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's an exciting time. There's a lot to figure out. Um, so we are keeping our website up to date as we get more information. Um, so we are excited for moving to start next, um, next Saturday, the 8th. 
of August is our first day of move-in. Um, and again, we'll be going through to the first um, weekend right before classes begin. So we are excited um, to see you all. And so I just wanted to thank Fallon and Linnell for answering all those questions. There were a lot of questions. So thank you for working through those and sharing all of that information. Um, so we appreciate you both. Um, thank you um, to everyone for tuning in, um, spending another Thursday afternoon with us here. Um, so we hope you all have a great rest of your day. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to call or email us and we're happy to help. So take care everyone. Bye. Bye.